Now I will try to give a brief description of the algorithm that we use in order to do the single cell optimization. So we understood that uh, in order to do the single cell optimization, which is a kind of data-driven modeling, we want to find the parameters of a model, of a mathematical model, so it matches the experimental data. And in order to do this, so we inject an input current to the uh, real neuron and we get the experimental data and in the same time we inject the same input current to the mathematical model and we get our simulated traces. For, uh, uh, of course, in order to test all the parameters from the parameter space, we need for uh, computing resources. So we used the uh, BluePyOpt algorithm, which is described in the uh, paper in uh, Frontiers in Neuroinformatics from 2016. And in the same time, it's uh, uh, publicly available in, on GitHub. So um, it's installable using the pip manager uh, in Python. And uh, we'll see uh, more details about this optimization algorithm we see uh, what's the simulator that it's using and uh, how the feature extraction is done. You already seen this. And how uh, the parallelization of this algorithm is, uh, is done too. So uh, BluePyOpt, it's a multi-objective evolutionary algorithm uh, that uh, relies on a Python library, which it is called DEEP, Distributed Evolutionary Algorithms in Python. And uh, inside DEEP, uh, we have many algorithms, such as, uh, um, for example, you might know the particle swarm optimization. And um, um, the simulator uses, um, uh, needs uh, an evaluation function in order to map the model parameters to a fitness uh, score. So in order to, do, to know what to do uh, from generation to generation, we need a fitness score. So um, uh, BluePyOpt interacts also with uh, some external simulators, as you have seen uh, previously uh, with Neuron, but also with Nest, uh, Pine, Brian, Steps, and so on. Uh, and um, you have seen that it relies uh, also in a, on a uh, EFL library, so for the electro electrophysiology feature extraction, which, which is also open source software. And uh, the parallelization, so in order to evaluate individuals in a population on several cores in parallel, um, it relies uh, on, um, um, actually it's not easy to see here, but it relies on uh, IPI parallel, it's called. Uh, and the optimization algorithm uh, works like this. So initially we have uh, um, an initial population of size n of individuals. The individuals are the parameters that we want to test. And uh, uh, after that, uh, there's an evaluation step. So uh, for uh, each individual, we calculate this feature fitness values and we, we test uh, if uh, our uh, score is good enough. If it's not good enough, of course, we continue. So we do a selection step. Uh, this is just like every genetic algorithm. Um, in order to generate, so we replace the population in order to generate another population of individual individuals and we perform uh, genetic operations on this temporary population in order to generate a new set of individuals. And after that, we insert the, these new um, individuals into the population and uh, we update, of course, the fitness values of the individuals and we remove uh, worse individuals uh, until the size of, of the populations equals back to N. Uh, so, this until uh, stop criteria is fulfilled. So, 
we get to the end of the search of the parameters. Um, the BluePy opt, of course, follows an object-oriented programming model. So the software is modularized into classes. Uh, and uh, there are a few classes like model, morphology, mechanisms, protocols. I'll describe later what these classes are for. So stimuli, recordings, locations. They, these classes are specifically used in order to set up the neuron models and to assess their input-output uh, properties. There are other classes like objectives uh, and features uh, and the features and um, the optimization accepts an evaluator object as input and uh, runs uh, the search algorith algorithm uh, in order to find the parameter values that generate the best objectives uh, and the um, the goal of this algorithm is to uh, minimize a weighted sum of objectives. Uh, and this evaluator object define, defines an evaluation function. We'll see later on how the objectives are calculated in order to map the parameters to these objectives. And of course, starting from the model, we will need uh, a protocol in order to attach stimuli, recordings, to make it more real and usable through the code, of, of course. Uh, and when this simulator is uh, run, a response is generated for each of the stimuli that uh, we used. And then there's a location class, of course, uh, that is created to specify the location on the neuromorphology uh, where we want to set up the, the stimulus, of course. And, um, but, okay, sorry, just one second. I forgot to, It's a little bit a bad view of the of the presentation. Okay, now is better. Okay, so um, all the optimizations are available, but it's moving on its own. <laughs> so, uh, all the optimizations are available on this uh, CSCS container that uh, Luca was mentioning before. And uh, the code for setting uh, the parameters, I mean, also in the live paper, you'll see this structure, uh, this structure of the folders. Uh, so, um, are separated into uh, various modules. And I will describe each of these folder in order to let you see what's going on inside, okay? So, uh, of course, the first step in the config folder, you'll find specified uh, in a JSON file called morph.json, the morphology that we are using. Um, it's an ask file, okay? Uh, and um, later on, also in the config, you'll have the features that already Rosanna uh, showed you how they are extracted. And so uh, for each uh, current step, you have specified uh, the, the feature and the mean and standard deviation for that feature. And there's a code that's, in, that's available inside of that, uh, inside of that uh, zip folder that reads this uh, feature.json and calculates some objectives based uh, on the experimental trace and on the uh, simulated trace in order to calculate the, the fitness, okay? And uh, this is the way that the algorithm calculates the objective. So for each uh, feature uh, value, uh, it uses the mean 
experimental mean and the experimental standard deviation and the objective is calculated like the like this um, so in this way uh, all the objective scores are normalized to a common scale so we can combine them regardless of the units um, and uh, weights these uh, objectives according to the feature variability and um, going back to the config folder you will find also uh, a protocols.json file where the protocols are specified so you'll see here for each current step what's the delay what's the amplitude what's the duration and so on and in the same way the algorithm reads this protocol.json and creates an object in order to um, uh, apply uh, in this uh, example uh, a square pulse okay based on the uh, step delay uh, duration and everything that's written in the protocol.json um, always in the config folder you'll find the parameters.json where um, you'll see that some parameters are marked as fixed so they are kept constant through the optimization and uh, uh, in this case the parameters to be optimized are the maximal conductances of the ion channels and um, of course the location is based uh, on the section list names of the morphology uh, in the way that neuron reads the sections when it loads the morphology uh, you see that it uh, assigns also uh, distribution to the conductances and um, in the same way uh, based on these parameters and based on the mod files that are uh, in the mechanisms folder um, the algorithm uh, reads these parameters and of course it um, appends to the model uh, a mechanisms uh, more mechanisms sorry okay so you'll see here that the locations are specified based on the section lists okay this is all python okay and um, of course once we created this cell template it's called um, we need to create the cell evaluator object that I was talking about um, of course this object needs to know um, which protocols to inject which parameters to optimize and how to compute the score in order to uh, optimize the cell so um, this uh, cell evaluator constructor has a field which is called parameter param names uh, which contains the ordered list of names of the parameters that are used as input and there will be that will be fitted later on you will find all these python files inside the model folder and um, <coughs> in the end once we have the cell template and we have the evaluator we we can create a deep optimization object and of course we can run it yes so in the previous slide you had a setting that you called a <coughs> uh, simulation with the neuron simulator class so how, do, how does the um, code know did, so for example let's say you did neuron simulator and then you want to change when you write or something loose or whatever how does it know the mapping between the parameters described in the parameters file and the parameters that exist in the file that's native to that simulator's language? Um, so each simulator, so if you want to use uh, another simulator, uh, so not Neuron, but Brian, for example, um, this, this is the code specifically for Neuron simulator, uh, actually. Yes, because uh, the I don't optimizer <coughs> is written to so if you want to right. well, the first uh, the earlier slide there's a list of all the simulator yes it, it uses yeah. also Brian but we don't have many experience with that so I I don't really know how to uh, switch this, to from neuron the, the platform is uh, um, implemented using neuron for 
these kind of use cases. So there, I guess so there could be like, a, like if you had like a neuromel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the kind of code generation from that. Yes. Is a constant. In the next phase of the human brain project called the SG3, which is going to start in April, we are going to uh, generalize the uh, simulation of genes and the tools in such a way that uh, they can talk to each other. So, for example, you are going to have uh, the, the files that are going to be read from different simulators, and the, optimi the optimizer will read from some standard yeah. files that uh, allow you to run any, any type of this. But the, the choice is going to be neural or nest. Uh, I don't know is, uh, if it is going to be fine. Oh. Because this is single cell. We are talking about single sure. cell optimization, model, realistic yeah. single cell optimization. Yeah. Maybe we can add Arbor. I don't know if you know anything about it, but it is some um, simulation engine which is similar to Neuron, but uh, it is claimed to be more efficient. But there are no use cases so far. But uh, during this G3, we also um, we develop Arbor. And so, the use cases will also be able to run using Arbor. But we are talking about the single cell realistic implementation. OK, so um, DEEP evolves uh, a population through consecutive generations. And uh, for each generation, we have uh, a set of spring, offspring individuals that are generated uh, from the parents. And uh, of course, we have to specify this, uh, the size of this, this offspring population and the maximum number of generations before running the optimization. So these are two important parameters. Okay? And uh, uh, at the end of the optimization, I mean during the optimization, the Hall of Fame keeps track of the indivi individuals during the evolution process. So uh, the population statistics are recorded in a so-called uh, logbook. And, um, and you can save the genealogy between the individuals. And you, of course, you can analyze and visualize the in individuals at the end. And um, uh, in this deep uh, algorithm, uh, a checkpointing uh, is uh, implemented in order to, uh, to save the algorithm states in Python in a so-called uh, pickle file. Okay? So uh, inside the checkpoints folder, you will find at the end uh, a PKL file. So here you uh, have a screenshot of a Python simple code in order to, uh, uh, to read at the end uh, this uh, pickle file. So you will see that inside the pickle file we have key keys as generation, uh, hall of fame, parents, logbook, history, and population. And at the end of the optimization, you can find information about the, the population that was studied and the, the parameters at the end. So you see here that we had only two generations here. Uh, and we see that we had like 22 parameters inside the optimization, and we see those 22 parameters. Okay? Yes? So, by default, are you doing something, are you doing like a non dominated sort, or are you just doing like weighted sum and that's. Weighted sum for now, mm -hmm. yes. Um, yes. So, and for the kind of simulations that you're doing, do you think. Um, you're likely to, to, are all the genes going to be converging into one like spot in the parameter space? You're still getting, in your Hall of Fame, you're still getting like a spread of, of locations and different, like, I don't, I don't know how well this maps onto the question of degeneracy, but, you know, having different different um, parameter, sets of parameter values that can give you the same behavior, like, does that mean you can observe with the different genes in the um, optimization, or do they tend to all just cluster near like the global maximum? Mm, it actually doesn't tend to maximum, so uh, it, it maps to the degeneracy uh, problem. Okay. So you will find different solutions uh, when using uh, maybe the same parameters, okay? So if you, if you look at the Hall of Fame, then you might yes. have different sets. The parameters are clearly different, 
but you get roughly the same. Yes, yes, time. yes. Uh, in the Hall of Fame, we save only the 10 best yeah. individuals, but if you analyze those, you'll see that there are closed solutions. Yes. Do they tend to exist like on a continuous manifold of parameter space, or do you just get a pocket here and then there's another pocket over here? Actually, we are still analyzing those parameters. So uh, we have a collaboration with uh, um, with Israel. So they are analyzing what's happening with the parameters throughout the evolution uh, and how the clouds are, uh, yeah, clustered. Okay. But we don't have yet a, a paper published on this, and uh, we don't have an answer yet. Okay. Um, and at the end, we, gener uh, we generate together with the PKL also a hoc template. So you can use directly this hoc template into Neuron if you don't have Python experience, for example. And uh, this hoc template contains the final parameters, so the optimized ones. So you can play with this hoc template in order to see, uh, to analyze the behavior of the, of the optimized cell. Okay? And um, at the end, you have this information in the figures file. Uh, so uh, you see the traces generated by the best solution in the Hall of Fame. Uh, and um, you see also how the objective scores um, are uh, behaving, so the standard deviation of these objectives. And in the same time, you see how the optimization evolved, okay? So you have uh, a plot of the minimal, maximal, and uh, average scores uh, found uh, during the evolutionary algorithm for this, I don't, maybe it's 60, uh, yeah, 60 generations, okay, in this case. And um, later on, you'll see an example use case that it's described also in the Blue Pie Opt paper. Um, so we will play inside the collaboratory with a single compartment, compartmental neural model with just two parameters. So we'll have the maximal conductances of the sodium and potassium uh, Hodgkin Axley ion channels. And we will play with this in order to um, reproduce just, for example, uh, one um, spike and five spikes. And um, yes, uh, we will see, we'll run it for two or 10 generations like this, and we'll see uh, the evolution of the, uh, of the objective sum during these generations. Uh, all this in a, an IPython notebook in your collab. Okay, and we'll see later how to do by code, how to set up the cell template uh, with few lines, how to um, uh, load the morphology, how to create the mechanisms, and um, how to create the parameters, the, the cell template, as I told you, and how to add the protocols in order to inject the currents, okay? And uh, then we'll see how to run these protocols uh, on, uh, on a cell and how to plot the response traces. And uh, at the end, once we will define the features and objectives, uh, we will evaluate the cell. And uh, at the end, of course, we will set up and run our optimization. And uh, yeah, we will reproduce the behavior I was showing before, just one spike and five spikes. And um, that's it. We will see it later on uh, iPython notebook in the Collab platform.